Today, we're going to be learning about contemporary artist Iris Scott. She is an American finger painter, and she got her start when she was too lazy to wash out her paintbrush. So that's when she decided to finish the painting with her fingers instead. And I think it's so cool to look at some of that. So as I'm showing you some of her images, I just wanted to share with you that um, where she kind of got her base and how she chooses um, what interests her. So on her page, she explains how she was, um, she grew up in Washington and she basically spent, her and her sister spent the evenings listening to her mom, a writer, tell about these epic stories about um, the lives of families, pets, like parrots, lizards, cats, goats, and rabbits, as well as, you know, wild roaming coyotes appearing in the stories, etc. So she said that she feels that this is a deep connection with animals in her because of her upbringing. And that's why she likes to kind of close the distance or the gap between humans and nature. So she studied in Florence um, in the same, you know, century old halls where Raphael, Michelangelo and da Vinci worked. And when she moved to a tiny apartment um, in a rainforest outside of Taiwan, that's where she launched her career. So she said her journey took her from Taiwan to Seattle and then to Brooklyn, New York, where she lived and worked in a loft space um, of a former mattress factory. So you can see a lot of her work as she's going through on that. And she said, you know, the successes of New York and living, as she says, on the noisiest street in America led her to kind of seek out isolation and solitude, you know, peace and quiet. And so that's when she moved to New Mexico. Um, and she feels, you know, she's finally found her place home where she's connected. And it's by Ghost Ranch, which is where Georgia O'Keeffe used to paint and do different things too. So let's take a look at more on her dog paintings. So you can see she's got several different um, paintings about dogs and you can really see the movement in it. So today we're going to be working on creating our own dog shaking off water in the style of the finger painter, Iris Scott. So I'm going to show you how to draw the dog as well as practice our very own finger painting. As usual on your paper, what I want you to do is write your name and your teacher code. This way, when we're ready to paint on it, we know exactly whose is whose. Afterwards, I want you to flip your paper over and maybe angle your paper. You could draw trying to have your head of the dog tilted. Or you can try having your paper tilted in a different direction like this in order to draw your head already tilted for you. What I want you to do is try starting based on the practice that we've already done with the directions and our practice sheet for how to draw the different style dogs. I would like you to start with working on the nose and work your way. You can practice using whatever you've done on your practice sheets, and you can also tilt your paper if that's easier for you, or just draw the head tilted itself. It's your choice. What I'm looking for in this project is that the head is tilted and that you have one ear up and one ear down. The second way to draw your dog is you can also do it the normal way of having your paper in the uh, landscape way or in the portrait mode. But start with drawing it tilted instead of having the paper tilted. So the first way I showed you is if you tilted your paper and the second way is this. All you do is you draw the nose a little bit tilted and then you create the same face and everything else in order to create the tilted side effect. So remember to have enough room to have one ear going up and then one ear going down. And then you draw the body so then you know exactly where you want it to be. For this next part, we're gonna be using our quick sticks again. 
So remember, you only want to twist up just enough. That way it doesn't squish all the way out. And do remember that these dry in 90 seconds. They're really cool. So I'm using this color on the tongue of my dog. <clears throat> and then at your tables, you're going to be finding a lot of different other colors. Think about the colors that you want to use on your dog. And we're going to be using several to create layers. Here, I'm using yellow. And I'm just going to add in a little bit of the yellow throughout my dog. So I'm starting on the face part, right on its muzzle, its nose area. And I'm adding it here. Because remember, these dry really quick, and I want to add some texture, I want it to blend a little bit, just like we've practiced before on other projects. So as I'm doing this, I'm thinking, what's the next color that I'm going to grab? And you want to work in these chunks, make it a little easier on yourself. So the next color I'm grabbing is my brown. And when I go to add the brown on top, I'm going to draw lines, just like fur lines. And at first you're gonna look at it and go, huh, that's not exactly what I want. I want it to all blend. But you actually want to see some of the yellow. So around the face, I'm gonna do darker because I want the nose to stand out as well. And I'm not gonna fill in all of the white area. You're not gonna really be able to see your lines for, you know, your pencil lines for the eyes and a little bit on the ears, but try to remember exactly where you were. So here I'm taking my colors again. I'm gonna take the yellow and put some yellow on top of the brown, not in all the spaces. I'm just playing with mixing it by adding lines, adding the texture. I know in this video it's a little bit shiny um, because it's wet. I'm also gonna go in with another color such as red, as you see here. And this also gives it a little bit more interesting looks so I can see the yellows, the browns, and the reds. You can also use orange too. So to help me know where my dog's ears are so it just doesn't look like a big blob, I work my way outwards and I put like a darker color next to the, ear, the face. So I use that reddish orange and then I'm going to put the brown on top of it and that helps it look a little bit more different just like I did the yellow for the nose. I started with the yellow there. I'm gonna add in a little bit more brown areas in a little bit. And then on the ears, I did the red and the brown on top of it. Now for the body, I wanna add a little bit more color, like maybe have its tummy um, be a little bit different. So I'm gonna grab some other colors and mix that on here too. So now that you know how I played with this, I want you to try to start, work in chunks. Start with the nose area, work your way to the head, then go to the ears, and then go to the body. everything stand out again we are going to use a black oil pastel and this works really well at giving a little bit of that graininess and that texture for the fur that we really want to see as well so remember you don't want to cover over all the areas that you added I use the white to just kind of the lightest color on top of the uh, our quick sticks in order to show the fur. Same with that yellow part too. So when you're tracing over with the black oil pastel, make sure you don't cover too much of that as you go through because it really makes everything stand out. 
What I also did on the nose is I traced it nice and dark and then I just lightly colored it in so I could still see my other lines. Kind of see through the paint a little bit of the different details, but you want to trace around the head and then also the outside of the ears. So this way you can see how each of your pieces stand out, how they look, and then you can darken other areas that you need. And finally, before we move on to the next part, I want you to cut out your dog to the best of your ability. As I'm doing it, I have to break it into chunks. So start with an area, take the whole thing off, move the paper. One hand holds your picture and the other hand holds the scissors. So your scissors are always facing away from you and straight and you're only moving the paper to help. And then once you're done with that, recycle your scraps, take out your glue stick, and you're going to nicely put a good layer of glue on. Remember, glue dries fast too, so don't spend too much try time trying to add glue in a really thick layer. You want to go around the edges, do a little bit in the middle, and then place it down on your paper wherever you feel you want it best on your piece. Sometimes a little to the left or a little to the right gives a really good breakup um, of the paper versus always being in the middle. Finally, after rubbing it and smoothing it a little bit down, check any of the pieces or areas like the edges and see if you need to reapply the glue there. And that way you can make sure that it's still on there. Now that we have our paper on here, the next step is the splatter technique. What I've done is I've taken our liquid tempura and I've added a little bit of water to it so that way it gets a nice easy way of spreading on the paper. You're going to have a paintbrush and you're going to be tapping the paint onto your paper to kind of give it that effect. So you can also use your other finger and just tap like you're a drummer on top. What you want to do is make sure you're close to the paper as you're doing this okay and you want to make sure you don't put too like a lot of blobs dripping and falling on top of your dog yes cover your dog with the paint too but not a lot you really want to see it on the black paper and just a little bit on top of your pet because you want to see the water across just like iris scott after you're done with the splatter, this is going to be done at a different table with me, and I'm going to have boxes so it keeps you and the tables clean, and we'll do it in groups. The last thing we're going to do is the fun part of finger painting, and I will show us that next step. Here comes the fun part of the finger painting. So I don't want to see us get paint all over our hands. I would only like to see paint on one finger and that is your pointer finger. So as you stick it inside the paint, you can grab from the different colors. I'll have two of them over there. And think about the size of your fingers as well as the direction. You don't wanna just put dots anywhere. You want to think about the way the dog is shaking Remember how on our practice sheets, we created those lines that created like a movement piece. So that way you can see the line of where the water is moving around and through of the dog actually shaking, just like Iris Scott's shaking dogs. So when you go through this, just follow along of what those curves look like. On the left side, you can see that I'm a little bit more planning on exactly where I want to place it and to keep that curved. Whereas on the right, the water is just kind of flying a little bit everywhere. Yes, you can put a couple dots on top of your dog if you want and the way it lands on it, because of course water is going to be going places on top of them too. So just think about where you're placing things. Don't rush this process. I want you to have fun, but also add in um, the paint safely and without getting it on anybody else. Once you're done, take a picture for Artsonia, give it a title, and also complete your artist statement.